Hi again, and welcome to part 3. In this part, I'll take the kinematic ray equation and derive the differential equations that I want to end up at. And uh, here we have the kinematic ray equation. For convenience, I'll define a new term, and I'm going to call that new term slowness. And by that, uh, I will get a function, which I call u, and the value of that is the inverse of the speed of light. And by using this definition, our kinematic ray equation becomes the following. I'll label this result, because I'll have to get back to it later. Label it number one. I'll, I'll do another thing. I'm going to take this definition of slowness. And I'll differentiate each side of this with respect to one of the dimensions of R. Right, So those dimensions could be x or y or z. I'm just going to use a general term, ri, when I talk about the general uh, dimension. And uh, what we get from that is that the derivative of u of r with respect to that general dimension, ri, has to be, which according to standard differentiation rules, is, and this result I'll label 2. In the next step, I'm going to do something similar to equation 1. I'll differentiated with respect to <clears throat> with respect to s this time but i'm only going to look at the ri component of the expression that i've labeled number 1 and what i get from this is derivative with respect to s of u of r and instead of looking at the r vector with respect to s we will get the derivative of ri the i component of r with respect to s and on the right hand side we just look at the definition of what the gradient operator does and we just pick out the term that refers to the dimension ri and uh, when we do that we just write the result like this i label this result 3a now i'm going to focus on the right hand side uh, i'll use the chain rule i'll introduce three new intermediate variables, r1, r2, and r3. So we change from dds into dr1 ds. We get to introduce the derivative, partial derivative, with respect to r1. And here we get the same expression that we had in the parentheses. And we do this right for all three dimensions that we want to introduce, dr2 ds, dr2, the term in the parentheses, respect to ri and the last dimension we get the r3 ds respect to r3 and the term in the parentheses we can write this term a little more uh, compactly we get the following what we notice is this first term here is analogous to this term it just comes straight from the kinematic ray equation and so we can replace that term with the ratio of these two terms uh, so what we get is this is equal to 1 over u of r, and we get a partial differential in here. And we have the same expression as before. What we can do here now is we can recognize that the last two terms, if you look at this term and we look at this term, we notice that they are derivatives of each other. right? So we can use the product rule in inverse. And when I say we do the product rule in inverse, I'm basically just saying that we are integrating. We recognize that we have a function and its derivative multiplied by each other. And that helps us see that we can use the product rule just in the opposite direction to do the integral. And the result from this is we get 1 over u of r times the sum still over j. Inside we get 1 half partial derivative with respect to ri and we get f inside here let's say that's travel time function of r with respect to r j we get this squared so by using the product rule the other way we can check that this is the same as what we started with and it is now we recognize that this term the half and this term the der derivative with respect to ri, they don't really depend on j, uh, which is used in the sum here, which means we can bring them outside of the sum. So I end up with 1 over 2 u of r and the partial derivative with respect to ri outside. And then let's think about what this this sum represents, right? We have the, the sum of the partial derivatives of the travel time function. That's pretty much the same thing as the gradient of the travel time function right the nabla operator and 
as we remember, that's used in the iconal equation itself, where we have that the, the absolute value of the travel times function's gradient is equal to the inverse of the speed of light, or u, as we have given that uh, a new definition now. What we actually have here, then, is the square of the inverse of the speed of light, or the square of u, the function u. We can... Uh, Simplify a little bit more. We will find the derivative of u of r squared, you know, using regular differentiation rules, original equation, u of r, and the derivative becomes then, and from this, we get that the twos cancel, the u's cancel, and all we're left with is this partial differential. So now to restate, since we've been deriving the right hand side of the iconal equation all this time, we're going to take the left hand side of the original equation which we had we started with that we get the derivative of the kinematic ray equation and now now on the right hand side we use our result which we just found partial differential of u of r with respect to ri and this equation i'm going to call 3b the next step is now to relate the right hand side of this equation of 3b to the variable s because that's going to be our integration variable for the differential equations that we want. So let's let's start with some simple relationships that we have. We can recognize that the function u of r, right, that's the slowness of the light, that is the same as the change in time over the change in travel distance. You can also see that if we look at only at the component in the i direction or ri direction of this slowness, that's the same as looking at the change in time divided by the change in distance along that particular direction. It's the same relationship, just looking at one dimension instead. If we if we take the derivative of each of these two equations, the partial derivative with respect to ri, I'm going to choose to do that on, on this side, that is equal to partial derivative with respect to ri of dt ds. And for this equation, I'm going to differentiate with respect to s of u r i, that is the same as the differential with respect to s times the differential of t with respect to r i. Using this relationship, what do we see? Well, we recognize that the right hand sides here are equivalent because the right hand sides both are the differentials of time, it's just the order of whether they're the differentials of s first or r i first. That's the stuff that that varies and those can be switched around in these type of differentials and that means that since the right hand sides of these are the same that means the left hand sides must also be the same so the relationship that we find out now is that the differential of u of r with respect to r i is equal to differential of u of r i of r with respect to s we notice that we have this is the same as this term in 3b and previous equation 3b then becomes it's now equal to i'm just going to write the differential with respect to s as as its own thing like this and naturally from this we have the differential with respect to s on both sides and since those are equal that means that whatever we are taking the differential of are also equal that gives us the following uh, let's scroll a bit we get that u of r times dri ds has to be equal to u r i of r rather simple and from this we can conclude that differential of r i with respect to s is the same as the ratio of the slowness in r i direction to the magnitude of the slowness and that by the definition of what the u is is the same as v of r multiplied by u of r i of r and i'm going to label this equation 4 so if we look at equations 2 which we had and 4 both of these are the ordinary differential equations that we need i'll just summarize them here as a system to bring it together for a three-dimensional case we're going to have equations for r1 r2 and r3 the first part of that system we're going to have dr1 dr2 dr3 three all with respect to s they are going to be equal to that's equation four here dri ds equals to v of r times u of r i of r and we get this again for each of the dimensions okay so these are the first so for these three equations right 
the reference is from equation four that we've used here. Then for the last three, we're going to use equation two. And equation two, if we look back at that, it relates the derivative of u r one with respect to s and so on for each dimension. Those are equal to, according to what we figured out before, minus one over v squared times the partial derivative of v of r with respect to r1. And we have the same pattern down here. Let's take a look at what each of these variables mean. The first three equations we can just write a little bit more compactly, like this. In vector form, uh, we get dr over ds. And what this differential represents is how much does the vector change given a certain distance traveled. And as you remember from before, ds is the same as the absolute value of dr, right? We have dr that's the same as this. And so this represents a unit vector. That's the direction of travel of the ray of light. And what we just did, we related it to another expression, the speed of light in the medium, and this new variable that we introduced, which we're calling the slowness vector. The speed of light, that's given in the medium, right? That's just a lookup table. So if you have a lens, for example, we know the speed of light at various points in that lens, and we're going to use that this function v to describe that. u, on the other hand, is a variable that we introduced to keep track of in which direction is the current ray that we're looking at having a speed. And that can change depending on where the, the ray came from. That's part of the ray tracing process. Now the magnitude of u, because, because we defined it this way, the magnitude of u is the inverse of the speed of light. The magnitudes of these two cancel out, giving us the unit vector, which is the direction where the light is traveling. We can also write the last three equations in a vector format. And what we see that we have the u of r with respect to s on this side. And by solving this differential equation, we will find u of r. And that's the term used in the first equation. So this is the way that these equations are coupled. And we also see that the u of r is solely determined by the speed of light. So we have these two products here. We have v, the function v, that's the same as the one we looked at before. And then we have this part, which is the derivative of the speed of light. That's how quickly the speed of light changes as we move through the medium. Another word for this is the gradient of the speed of light. Once we know a function describing the speed of light in the medium, we can figure out all of these terms. Then we allow the differential equation solver to solve the relationship between these terms. When we use the differential equation solver, we will get uh, values for r of s, and we're going to get values for u of r of s. So r of s, remember s represents the distance that we're, that we're looking at. So if we integrate over s from 0 to 1000 meters, then r of s is going to contain all the coordinates that the ray of light is passing through during that kilometer. And that, that's what we're most interested in, right? The path of the light. Uh, U of R of S is representing the direction of travel at each of those positions. We're not looking directly at, at that as a useful result, right? We, we're mostly interested in figuring out where the ray is ending up, right? The position of the ray, not so much the direction at each point, but nevertheless, the direction is, let's call it a byproduct of the way of solving the equations. That wraps up part three in this series. If you find this video useful, please like and subscribe. In the next part, in part four, we will take this theory and we will apply it to a real example. We will look at how light propagates through the atmosphere. We're going to use a open source software called Octave, which is similar to MATLAB, to calculate the path that the light takes in the atmosphere. Thanks for watching. See you next time.